I'm talking to David. David, you volunteered, I think, in South Africa. Can you tell me something about what you did there? Right. I was on a project which was situated just outside Port Elizabeth. at a township called Quenacolo. In Quenacolo, um, how do I put this, it's probably what everybody would expect a township to be. It was home-built shacks, it was Mandela housing, Mandela housing that were put up by a building company that were fleecing everybody so that even they were tumbling down. And right in the middle of this is a project called Emmanuel. And I've actually forgotten the phrase now, how it works out, but basically it's advice and care for people with HIV. It's um, built up of two wooden sheds. Well, at the time I was there, one enormous container with holes cut in it for windows and a recently built toilet block. Uh, in the porter cabin, within the um, container were the offices. They were also preparing to run a um, a sewing machine type, type product, project and was also the kitchen, more of which later. They ran a creche which was for youngsters of parents or grandparents who'd actually got jobs in, in uh, Port Elizabeth which meant that they had to be dropped off and they were there from 7 o'clock in the morning until whatever time they, they were picked up late afternoon. Those youngsters were basically as soon as you could walk until school age. That was one of the things actually that, that sort of brings a lump to your throat. They used the old-fashioned method that we used to use in the UK of learning by rote. But when they are saying pr um, prayers, when they are singing hymns and when they're saying poems and when they're talking to you, these little ones of four and their, or thereabouts of age are actually speaking three languages. They can speak their own kosher language, um, Afrikaans and also English, which makes brings a lump to your throat because it's a case that they've got a hell of a sight of achieve, more of achievement at four than we got at sitting in our 60s. Um, and as I say, it is old fashioned. Although I understand it is illegal, the lady that runs that does have a stick. And I saw her use it twice. And to be perfectly honest, I would say justified when one little kid gets up and pees over his mate. And when uh, Auntie Nellie's own granddaughter actually tried to pull rank, she got put down into a place as well. In addition to that, um, at lunchtime, they do a lunch service. Um, the two cooks that they've got there, Veronica and the other lady whose name I could never pronounce, they actually must have taken lessons from the disciples of Jesus because what they actually did with 90 pounds worth of, beg your pardon, food for 90 people and they were feeding 260 on average per day and the cuts of meat that they were using the average British housewife would have turned a nose up at. What they could do with 24 chickens, as I say, was miraculous. But it was nutritious, it wasn't a big portion, but it was something for the youngsters to have. The kids that were coming in to eat were, were youngsters who were affected or infected by HIV and AIDS. And as I say, they were funded for 90 and we were doing 260. And it comes as a bit of a shock actually at times when you've got a queue and they're all there with their little boxes queuing up for their rice and, and chicken and vegetables um, and outside are kids that which are excluded from the scheme and they're hanging on the fence. Um, in addition to that, because of their school hours in the afternoon, um, they run after school projects, which is what I, one of the things I got roped into. And that was basic things like nutritional uh, information. Um, I was going to say fairly basic stuff: the harms of smoking, the harms of uh, the harm of drink if you have too much. And we did. I did it by producing cards. And we, is that good for you? Is that bad for you? And we had them running around if that was the good side or the bad side. And then we expanded on it, um, especially with the drugs. Are all drugs bad for you? And of course, the majority of people. And when I do this in the UK, the parents do exactly the same thing. They all go down to the end where I'm saying at the end of the room that drugs are bad for you and then you say what about aspirin what about a cup of coffee so it's to get people to think 
And again with the youngsters, it was a case of what do you want to do when you leave school? And majority of them were quite ambitious, but a lot of them, how do I say, were perhaps realistic as to their as to what they thought the outcome would be. I want to be a lawyer, but I don't think they'll give me the opportunity. So with that, I took myself down to the um, Red Location Museum and took photographs of all the people from townships who'd actually made it good. And they included a photograph of the guy that organised all the matches for the World Cup. And when I took the photograph in and said, who's he? They all knew who he was, but they thought he came from um, Cape Town. And it was a case of, he might have come from Cape Town, but he came from a township. If you want to try for it, and you bang the table and you stamp your feet, there's a damn good chance you'll get it. But you've got to make yourself seen and heard. So as I say, that was the right. 